I pray that according to the riches of God's glory, you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through the Holy Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I think this is a great prayer. As I said last week, whether or not this letter to the Ephesians was written by the actual hand of the Apostle Paul, I think it's impressive the the depth and passion the author has in loving these new churches in Asia Minor, the western coast of what is now Turkey. Nearly all of these church members were new Christians and under a lot of oppression, a lot of pressure to give up their faith. So the author of Ephesians wasn't writing to people to address a specific church problem. He wasn't writing to scold them for fearfulness or even to teach them something new. This author is simply saying a prayer for people he loves, praying that these new converts would root themselves firmly in the life-giving love of Christ. And as Mark points out in the parable of the sower, with those great images that Carol shared of the demon birds and the bad soil, faith has always been hard to hold on to, especially when times are tough. As Jesus says, the cares of this world, the lure of wealth and the desire for things can all too easily take hold of us. And like thorns, choke out the word of love that Christ speaks to the world so that it yields nothing. With the hard times our world is going through today, I think we would do well to pray this prayer constantly, that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith as we are being rooted and grounded in love. Times were hard and were just getting harder for Christians by the time the letter to the Ephesians was written late in the first century after Christ. If it was actually written by Paul, it would have been written from jail, from his final imprisonment before his death in Rome. So by then, the churches were knowing some terrible persecution. So the author of Ephesians offers this prayer so that the people he knew and loved there would not let go of their relationship with Christ. And I suspect that he thought that the persecutions would only increase in the near future. So he had to hope that those congregations that had been planted in that region would not be rooted out by Rome. And so he prays for them. According to the riches of God's glory, I pray you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through the Holy Spirit, and Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. We hear this as Bible speak, but it's a wonderful blessing when you stop to think about it. Because this author could have just as easily, I mean, this author was a preacher, and let's face it, we preachers aren't always known for our tact. He could have said, be sure you always do this. Make sure you never, ever do that. He could have nagged and lectured and gone on and on with detailed instruction. But instead, he prays for his people. It occurred to me that this is a prayer we could be praying for each other all the time, that we maybe should be doing that. We pray it for our confirmands on Confirmation Sunday. Confirmation we think of as like confirm that our youth are confirming a reservation that they made at the time of their baptism, but it really means with strength. It's, it's the prayers of the people to strengthen the faith of these young people because we know what obstacles will lie ahead for them. It's the same prayer we prayed for our mission team as they went off last week. It's the prayer we pray for our baptism babies. But what would it be like if we prayed this kind of a strengthening prayer, not just for the next generation of Christians, but for ourselves as well, for all our brothers and sisters in Christ? May you be strengthened in your inner being through the 
power of the Holy Spirit and may Christ dwell in your hearts through faith as you're being rooted and grounded in love. What if all of our actions were really motivated by love, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that our lives were deeply fed by Christ? What would that look like? Now, I'm a pastor, but I was raised in the South where people are kind of friendly. They give the friendly wave in traffic and stuff. But I've been learning this interesting new sign language <laughs> that you all have up in the Northeast. I, I, I think it's a form of driver's ed, maybe. I see it used a lot by people with New York plates. It's um, <laughs> these hand signals that you give to one another when things don't go your way. <laughs> And I've been thinking, well, you know, what if the next time I receive one of those bits of instruction <laughs> meant for my improvement in the use of turn signals, say, if I, <laughs> if I received that instruction, kind of hearing Jesus loves me playing in the back of my mind and, and just prayed this prayer for myself, maybe with my eyes open for safety, but... <laughs> Lord, strengthen me through the power of your Holy Spirit. Strengthen me in my inner being and dwell in my heart through faith so that I may be rooted and grounded right now in love. I've often said this. Um, it's much easier to preach Christianity than to practice it. So thank God we have opportunities all the time to practice our faith. We have worship, of course, but we have our church work and our life out there in the world. And it's under the stress and strains of things like trying to get through a lengthy committee meeting or put on a potluck dinner together or fix a leaky sink. It's in the heat of those challenges, I think, that we most need to pray this kind of prayer, that we remain firmly rooted in the love of Christ. I don't know what you who were adult leaders of this last week's mission trip experience, but I know that in my experience of going on week-long camps or trips like that, I was always struck by how these full immersion programs provide everyone a chance to grow deeper roots in their faith, deeper roots than we can grow just in one hour on a Sunday now and then. 